So in this video I'm going to show you how I made this and I realize this is not much to look at right now because it's covered in blue tape because it's drying but this is going to be a wooden soccer ball. Um, I believe they're also called Ideco Sahedrons. I probably pronounced that wrong but um, this is going to be a two-part series. I was thinking of just making it one but I just don't have the ball done in time for this video. But a couple years ago, I made a soccer trophy for someone who teaches um, girls soccer and he likes to give, give out trophies. Um, he asked for another one. At this point, so long ago, I'm actually embarrassed. I haven't been able to get around to doing it, but um, I wanted to make this one a little different. The first build is on my channel as well. But um, the math involved in one of these is a little intricate. And I couldn't find a great way to do it. So I kind of troubleshooted it after, after finding some instructions online that ended up not working. That was took me painstakingly a couple days to figure out it wasn't going to work. And I figured out two ways to cut the shapes because you need hexagons and uh, pentagons in order to make this. 20 hexagons to be exact and, and 12 pentagons. And um, the first method worked. It was something that I devised myself. The second method, because I was having a hard time cutting the pentagons, because there's two different angles on them in order to cut them, uh, I went online and found something that wasn't related to making a soccer ball that worked really well. So I'm planning on making two of these, and um, the method I discovered pretty much this morning worked awesomely. So I'll probably show that in the second video. I won't show remaking the whole ball, but I'll show um, making probably the second ball because I'm assuming it's gonna come out a little bit better. But with projects like this, it's a lot of trial and error and figuring, figuring things out. So this video is gonna be a little all over the place because I'm gonna show a lot of that process. But um, this turned out pretty well for, for what it's going to be. Parts of it will be painted, so there are some hairline cracks in it, which aren't gonna be a deal breaker for this project. Also, a lot of times on pieces like this, the joints towards the top separate a little bit, but since I'm going to sand it smooth, uh, those hairline cracks, cracks for the most part will probably disappear. But like I said, the second video, which I didn't know if I was going to show it, but since the ball isn't finished, I think I am, is going to be actually building the two trophies. So a uh, two, quickie two-part series. So this was the original uh, stuff I was using to make the jigs. It's from the Wood Archivist, which I've used before and I like their plans. But I should have trusted my gut because reading through it originally, I thought there was a lot of ways for this to go wrong. I'm sure if you can get it to work, it works great. I wanted something with repeatability because I do make these for soccer trophies, but I kind of want to play around with this form and making other sorts of things with it. So I wanted a jig that would uh, work and have repeatability, but I just didn't get that from this. So then, like I said, a couple years ago, I made something with these hollow forms and I knew it could make a soccer ball because I had made it before. So I started with that and started making my own jigs. So this right here is old footage. Um, if you want the dimensions on how I made this, you could, you could pause the video and look at it. But I give you the degrees and the thickness for these to, in order to make the hollow forms of the hexagons and the pentagons. I also have this video on my channel if you want a more in-depth description. But when I made these, I had a bunch of extra and I kept them. You could see how I'm making the, the pentagons and then I cut them into pieces. And this one, like I said, I knew I could work off of that shape because this ball fit together. And this is what it looks like. This is also a very cool form if you want a hollow looking ball. Um, that works as well. So I took those forms and I started to make a jig that would cut the angles. I started with the hexagon um, because all the angles are identical so it was a little bit easier. And I basically kind of um, reverse engineered this. So I found some measurements and I cut the pieces into strips of half inch uh, birch veneer plywood. So one dimension's a little bit thicker than the other for this piece. So um, I'm ripping it down to one dimension on the table saw and then I'll c cross cut it on the radio alarm saw with the stop set up in order to, to get the other dimension. So you can see that fits on there just about perfectly. And that's what I was going to start working with. 
So this is what that shape looks like drawn on there. And then this is basically what I had. I would cut the two sides. Now, if you could flip this upside down, you didn't need two separate jigs, but you can't because you're also cutting the angle at the same time. So I started with the jig and I got it to work. And then this is remaking it to uh, get it a little bit more perfected. So I had that angle cheated to the front. You could see, cause that's the angle you need. And then I traced the inside of the piece. I transferred all of those marks down the side of the piece because I was going to use those marks to align it on the jig. Um, you could see I, I, I extended all of my marks. I also extended my center down the piece. So the second one I make is at the same center point as the first. So you can see that when the lines, when the marks line up on the edge of my, my cutout square with the lines on the jig, I can put a brad in here and then put some stops in place. This was very easy to figure out. This took me about 20 minutes to do. Um, the pentagons was much harder because like I said, there's two separate angles to do on it, but this one was pretty easy. So just put some stops in place so this can't move around on me. And then I could do a test cut. Now, like I said, I, I very, very quickly made this jig one time before I'm kind of fixing the mistakes going the second time around. One of those was I didn't originally have this, this center line. So then I could do the exact same thing down here. You could see how I have it all lined up um, on those pieces. I already had cut. I can mark the angle on the bottom. You could see how all of my points line up with the marks I have. And then I could do the same thing. I could put the little three pieces into place. So the angle that gets cut on these is 22 and a half degrees. That was the angle on the original bottoms. And that is the exact same angle that works for these. And then you could see I could slide it through, cut one side, shift it and cut the other. And then I could flip it to the bottom piece and then cut that one as well. Now I could go through and cut the last two sides with this jig, but the size of the, the, um, my blank changed a little bit. So I decided to make a third jig just cause they're very easy to make in which I cu could cut the last two angles towards the end. I stopped using the third jig and I just transferred uh, back to the first top part of the jig in order to cut those last two pieces. And then I could send it through and I could have my pieces. Now the problem with this, with troubleshooting the soccer ball is you really have to make a bunch of parts before you can figure out if it's going to work. That's kind of the time consuming part. So then I noticed that my first test run was a little off and that is because I didn't make my jig wide enough and that square was hitting the, the butt of the fence. So I'd recommend, I don't actually know the dimension of this. This was just scrap I have around, but I would recommend making yours a little bit wider so you don't have that problem. I just went through and I trimmed off all the corners of my blanks and then it worked perfectly. You could see it fits on there quite nicely. So this is the one that's off. You can tell that one side is butted out versus the one that turned out just about perfect. You could tell that all those sides are the same, but you could also measure them. And that's a great way to figure out if your jig is going to work. They should all be the exact same measurement. So then I had a stack of, I think 24 or so. I always recommend cutting extra of these and I could go through and just cut a bunch. Now these did not turn out perfect um, for different reasons. Um, the tolerances on the rip, ripping of the, the table saw, the plywood and whatnot were a little bit different, but for the most part, they turned out pretty identical. You could see I taped it, roughly taped it together and everything's pretty good. You could see a couple parts are a little bit longer than the others, which I'm pointing out with my finger. But what I did the next day was I found one that was perfect. You could see I have all the marks on it on the top there. And then I went through and just trimmed it down. The other big test was the pentagons I had for the exact same project fit in their, their respective spots just about perfectly. So that was a very good sign. Um, these, the blanks I'm using were not all perfect as well. So there is that going, going forward. So like I said, I have the one with the blue tape is my masterpiece. And I'm just going through, there was maybe a dozen sides on all of my pieces that were a little too long. So I'm just going through on the belt sander and trimming them down to size. 
So then I tried to do the exact same thing with the pentagons, like I've been saying. I just didn't get the same results. So what I decided to do was um, try something else. You could see the main reason was there was two separate angles that you had to, had to worry about for this, and getting the two was a little hard. So I made a blank and then I, I cheated up to the line on the piece. Now this was, um, this directions for this was something I found online and I'll put a link to the article down below. This was not my design. I find, find it quite ingenious and I kind of geeked out on this because there's many, many, many possibilities with this, with this very, very simple jig, but it solved all my problems. And when I make the second ball, I'll probably make hexagons exactly the same way. So basically what it is, is you just have a fence on your table saw and your fence rides against your template and it cuts your angles. If you have the fence on the right side of the blade, it cuts the angles flared out at the bottom. If you move the fence to the left side of the blade, it undercuts the angles, which is what I'm looking for for the soccer ball. And you can just make some incremental changes to the fence to get it just about perfect. There's my piece and it fit in there quite well. Now I'm bratting it to the top of this just because this is going to be sanded and plywood's pretty easy to fill. Um, I don't have double-sided stick tape, but that would have worked as well if you don't want any marks in it. So as you can see, I already have this that fence attachment I made for the top of my fence, so it was easy to just... I didn't do anything special. This is three-quarter inch plywood with two sheets of half-inch ply bratted to the front of it. The table saw blade actually runs underneath of this fence. It's kind of hard to see from the angle, which makes it a very safe cut. And then, like I said, I had to move the fence a little bit to get it perfect, but you could see what's going on is the half inch plywood will ride underneath the fence. Your template rides on top of the fence and you get those perfect cuts. Um, it's kind of like um, recreating a template jig for a router on the table saw. This, you could recreate any sort of square shape with square sides. This, you can't really do curves with this on the table saw, but the possibilities are kind of endless for this design. So with that bratted in place, you can see how it will ride underneath the piece and you could cut. Now, I know I'm gonna get comments about fingers and table saws, and I don't discourage those comments. I think safety is really important in the shop but um, this looks more dangerous than it really is. I have a fence that I'm, I'm running this against, and like I said, the teeth of the blade are actually underneath that fence, and you could see that cut comes about just about perfect. The most important part, which I didn't really get from the hexagon jig, is the repeatability. These all turned out exactly identical, so you could go through and make your templates and get perfect parts. This is just a little bit of a different angle. Um, I could send all of these through once I had my blanks. The blanks were just a little oversized. So then with those sections, I could tape two of the sections together, add a little piece on the side, and then flip it over and tape the top section. My camera died before this was done, but I think there's about five or six pieces left over once you tape those three together, and I could just fill in the pieces. I didn't mention this, but the pentagon angle that you cut is 16 degrees, the hexagon is 22 and a half. Now, even though I showed it in the video the second time around, I'm probably not even going to use the hexagon jig. If you wanted to do it that way, you probably are going to have to watch the whole video I made of how I made those pieces because you also have to cut the angle on the bottom in order to make that jig. But the second time around, I'm most likely going to go online, find an image of these pieces so it's absolutely perfect because even my original hollow forms are a little off and then make perfect jigs for the table saw piece. And like I said, I will most likely put a very shortened version of that in the second video.